All right, welcome everybody. My name is Amy Cabrera. I'm actually your one star platinum IGN card holder. And today we're going to go over instant commissions. I was just explaining to the um, to the team that anybody who is brand new, this is a bit of an advanced training. However, it is good information for you to know and to understand that this is an option as well. Um, so just know it's a little bit more intricate than as if you were to go directly to a vendor, right? You guys know going directly to a vendor, there's uh, commissions built in. I'm gonna keep everybody you know. Um, there's commissions built in. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff, right? It's already in the pricing. It's not like you have to add a fee or anything like that. Wholesale pricing is a little bit different, okay? So wholesale pricing, there is no fee that's included in that. There is no commissions that are built into that because it's wholesale right? It's wholesale. So meaning that we're getting it at the lowest cost that our provider can provide. Now, sometimes our wholesale pricing is a little bit more expensive than public pricing. So you have to always cross check, right? I always cross check Google just because I never want to get surprised, right? So, um, so just, just know that. Okay. <laughs> awesome, Veronica. Welcome to the family. Welcome. So uh, what I was saying before I started recording is you guys, a lot of you know my story. Uh, we were actually um, homeless <laughs> right before we started this and we needed money desperately. I mean, we it was a bad situation. They had cut my husband's hours. Um, it had just started to pick up when I first started this, but we were still living definitely paycheck to paycheck and it was just, you know, all, all bad stuff. So um, I had to learn how to make money quickly. Uh, obviously being a travel agent, right? We make money for sure, but sometimes we have to wait for the pipeline to go through. Pipeline is a sales pipeline, right? Everybody understands that. And you want to constantly fill up that pipeline so that it's a constant paycheck, right? That's the pipeline. Instant commissions are a little different. You still want to fill up that pipeline because you want to earn your ITAN card and you want to earn those big commissions and all that good stuff. However, instant commissions, you can actually put money in your pocket the day that you book it rather than waiting for the trip to complete, et cetera, right? Um, so this is how I made a few hundred dollars my first month. I really mastered this. And this was kind of like my go-to when, when I first started, my, probably my whole first year, this was my go-to to make sure that I put money in my pocket right away. Um, and then eventually I was like, oh, I really want my ITAN card. So then I started to mix it up a little bit. But uh, so who here is familiar with my deals? Everybody's familiar with my deals, the Evo rewards. Okay. Give me a yes in the chat box. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so this is essentially how we do it right now. There's a couple different vendors, so to speak, that we can use. One of them is obviously my deals. The second one would be profit agility. Profit agility is, uh, unsold timeshares that are given to us, or we have the access to, I should say, through Archer Travel, right? Now in that, it, we essentially get them at really deep, really stupid deep discounted pricing, okay? Like it's really silly deep. Um, and you can either have the commissions go through Profit Agility or you can uh, do it as, a, as an instant commission, depending on what it is that you choose. Obviously, you know that if you do it through Profit Agility, uh, it goes through Roger Travel, you make 80% of that, but all of those commissions do count towards your ITAN card, right? If you do it um, the other way where it's instant commissions, you make all of the commissions, you make the, the commissions the day that you book it. However, it does not count towards your ITAN card, right? So always a pro and a con, you decide what, what you want, okay? So I, I pulled up uh, an example here because I feel like, especially right now that things are getting semi back to normal, right? Uh, we, I tend to get a lot of questions about concerts or sporting events and things like that. How many of you guys are wondering about like about sporting events and concerts and all that fun stuff that is officially starting, right? Okay, so I went to my deals, right? I do half and half money now, money later. Same, Eileen, that's actually what I do now. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite packages is always Disney, Disney World. Because um, with Disney World, I can book the hotel and flight together as a package inside, let's say, Vax or, or um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, just totally blanked out. Um, Funjet, Vax, uh, um, you know, all the ones that are inside Vax, essentially. 
And I just basically cross check in there. And then I can book the tickets for Disney on wholesale. So then I can put some money in my pocket right now. So you kind of just do a little bit of both. Um, I actually just had a package exactly like that. Um, so I booked the car rental through wholesale. I booked the um, I booked the tickets for the theme park through wholesale. And then I booked the flight in the hotel through our vendors. So I'll be getting money from the vendor, the 80%, but I also made some money up front, um, which essentially doing it that way pretty much doubled my commissions. Had I put everything through the vendor, I would have made about a hundred and uh, I think it was like 160 bucks or something. But because I did it the way I did it, my commission total ended up being about $340. So I'm always all about maximizing the commissions as well as getting some now and getting some later, right? Um, and it is really good for anybody who's new on the line to, again, to know that these are the deals that we can get, right? Um, you do have to do a little bit more research on this end, but sometimes it's worth it. You know, if I'm making an extra 160, 50 bucks, it's totally worth it. Okay. So what I did here is you guys know how to get to this, right? This is in your back office, Evo Rewards. Um, it's over here on the left-hand side, Evo Rewards. And then click here to, to access your Evo Rewards portal. And it brings you over to my deals. Okay. Uh, what did this do? Go away. <laughs> Hold on. There's way too many screens here. All right. So in here, in Evo Rewards, in my deals, right, you can see that it has travel, theme parks, um, eat, which is coupons for yourself. These you cannot sell, okay? So like if you're traveling somewhere or just around your hometown or whatever, and you want to see if you, you can get some coupons for local restaurants, this is where you're going to do it. You pull it up on your phone, they scan it, or they enter in the code, and that's it. You get coupons, um, grocery coupons, all that good stuff. Also, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we also have shopping, right? So like for me, I need a new computer because my laptop broke while I was traveling. <laughs> so um, I'm currently working with a broken screen right now. So I'm going to need a laptop, right? So the first place that I'm probably going to look is I'm going to go to shop and I'm going to um, go here and you can see we have 40% off on discount uh, for Samsung, $200 off of Apple, right? Like all this really cool stuff. So definitely don't overlook this. Um, don't overlook this because it's it's important to know, you know, what our benefits are. This is part of our benefits with being with Evolution and Archer Travel. Uh, now, when you click on play, this is where you're going to find your um, concerts, sports tickets, things like that, right? If you wanna just hover around it to see what you have available, um, then you can absolutely do that as well. Uh, so for this one, we're actually gonna do a concert. And uh, the one that we use here for the bigger concerts is gonna be Events 365, okay? Oh, nice, Carolyn, yep, exactly. Um, so Aaron, if it's not letting you register, what I want you to do is, is delete the app and I want you to, um, to totally do everything from your phone, meaning log in from your back office, okay? And on your phone, log in from your back office on your phone, go to Evo Rewards, you know, and it'll open up this page. And on the home page, it'll say download app. I want you to do it from your phone and then download the app from the, the website, okay? And it'll automatically enter in that code that is probably requesting that, that nobody knows, right? So that's um, the workaround, okay? Um, Kelly, you're going to have to uh, look at the, um, the specifics on that. Okay. All right. So events 365, you can see it's a 5% savings. I'm going to click on view deals. And in here, um, you just click on use coupon. You're going to copy this. Okay. And continue to cite. Now, here's where it becomes really important. So you know how when tickets first go on sale, right? There's all these third parties that buy up all the tickets. They're like, my, 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 right? And then they turn around and mark up the price. So sometimes we end up having tickets that no one else can find, okay? Which is really cool, right? It's happened multiple times. I remember this one time, um, Tommy Jo, she, uh, she, she had a client who wanted to go to the Paw Patrol right? Paw Patrol with their kids or whatever, and it was in Colorado. And they were totally sold out, could not find it anywhere. But we had it on our end. And we actually had it at whatever the beginning price was. 
but the client knew that it was sold out. So she was able to mark up the tickets, I think like 60 bucks each. And it was, it was uh, four people. So she made, I don't know, 340 bucks just on tickets, right? Just on tickets. So it kind of gives you a leverage when they are sold out. Don't worry about what the past pricing was when they're sold out you kind of have that, that leverage. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So for this one, um, I'm actually going to look at my daughter's, one of my daughter's favorite artists, which is Harry Styles. Uh, we're going to look at this one now, see where it says rescheduled. Usually you're not going to find tickets for that because rescheduled means that this was already sold prior to. Um, and it's just that now, now they actually have a venue and it's probably rescheduled from COVID. So I'm going to click on October 21st for Harry Styles in the Sun Arena in Connecticut, right? In uh, Uncasville, <laughs> Connecticut. Hopefully I said that right. And you can see here it's from 375, right? Now I've already looked this up, obviously, because I, I knew that I was doing a training. Um, and you can see that we have uh, tickets, or excuse me, row, uh, yeah, uh, section 103, Jesus, my brain is not working. Section 103, row L, starting at 375. And then obviously it goes up from there, right? Depending on where the section is. Now that's, to me, it's like, whoa, that's a lot, right? But we all know that fans pay what they want to pay. I went over to Ticketmaster and I looked at the same concert. I looked at the same thing, right? So Harry Styles, October 21st. And let me go ahead and see the tickets, see what they are starting at, right? So this is Ticketmaster. Usually people go to Ticketmaster when they're looking at tickets, right? So I click on, I agree. And look at the only thing that they have here. Y'all see that? $850, okay? That's a lot, <laughs> that's expensive, right? Each, by the way, and that doesn't include their fees. So I went over to, to go see what their fees are. And of course, you know, oops, let me use the other email. Okay. Uh, let's see. Does it just let me not sign in? Okay. So it's going to make me sign up for Ticketmaster. Usually I have a dummy account <laughs> for this reason. So I can just check um, pricing. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. So let's see what it really. <sighs> Hold on one second, guys. Who knows what my password is? <laughs> Let's see. All right, let that come up. Um, but so we know that it's $850 per ticket, right? That is the, the minimum that they have because they only have section 25, right? Okay. OMG right now. <laughs> Sheesh. Could you make it any more difficult? <laughs> Sorry, time's up. Of course it is, Ticketmaster. Thank you for that one. Oh, tickets are now sold out. Awesome. Well, there you go. I guess we can't look at this one. So we knew that it was $850, right? Let me go ahead and, and try to refresh this and see if it comes up. Uh, let's see. Dang, those sold quick, huh? My goodness. So you know that Harry Styles is obviously very popular. Um, so let's just do the math at $850. Okay. So now we know that they're sold out. Okay. Nobody can find them anywhere. Probably it's sold out here at Ticketmaster, which means that it's probably sold out in a, in a lot of places, except for with us. Right. So 
$375 plus a $45 service fee. This is charged by Events 365, not by you, okay? And here you can choose to add an additional wholesale service fee. Wholesale service fee. Oh, not you, sorry. Um, wholesale service fee, which is going to be that what goes in your pocket, okay? So let's say you wanted to charge a $50 wholesale service fee that goes to you. So how do you do that, okay? So how you do that is you're gonna take this pricing, right? You're, uh, you're gonna close the deal with the client on the phone. This is what I have it for. You can see that it's sold out. They can't find them, right? So now you have a leg up. Um, this is what I have them for. Uh, you can actually just give the full pricing. Sorry, let me get back over here, which if we did the full pricing, so, that's 375.10 plus 45.01, which is the service fee for one ticket, plus the $5, plus your $50 service fee, right, per ticket. I have each ticket coming in at $475.11. That includes all service fees and taxes. Do you see how you present that? You don't say, you don't say this number, Okay, you don't say, I got two tickets for $950. Ah, that's sticker shock. Okay, that's sticker shock. You don't want to use that verbiage. You want to save this price. I have each ticket for $475.11. That includes all the service fees, or that includes all taxes and fees, as well as the ticket. Um, and that is section blah, 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 blah. You repeat the section, right? Once they go for it, that's when you say, or excuse me, to get them, you want to, ask for the sale. Okay. Everybody knows how to ask for the sale. Who here was at convention? Who here was at convention and remembers how to ask for the sale? I want to know if y'all were paying attention. Okay. No, nope. you got to answer my question first. Who was at convention? How do we ask for the sale? Go ahead, Astrid. How do we ask for the sale? Go ahead and type it in the chat box. There we go, Sophia said it. What card would you like to place this on? That's right, MasterCard or Visa? You don't say, are you ready to book this? Do you want the tickets? Do you wanna book with me? You're gonna kill the sale. Instant, kill the sale. What card will we be placing this on? Is it a MasterCard or Visa? They're either gonna stop you or they're gonna give it to you. One of two things is gonna happen, right? Think about, here's how I always want you to think about it. When you call a cruise line, when you call a reservation in, when you call a um, hotel, when you call anything under the sun and you are making a purchase, do they say, do you wanna go ahead and book this? Or do they say, okay, great, I have this and it's, this is the total, what card are we placing this on? Boom, it's out the way, right? Get comfortable saying that. Say it to yourself in the mirror multiple times a day because it's going to feel weird. I promise you it's going to feel weird the first 20 times that you do it, okay? But the more that you do it, the more comfortable you feel, the more confident you are, the less that you lose deals because in your confidence, when you're confident in what you're doing, it, it exudes over the phone, right? Like people can hear that. They understand that you are now a professional, Mandy, and you know what you're doing. Does that make sense to everybody? That's really the, the clue right there. I always hear, I, I've had so many quotes and nobody books with me. Are you asking for the sale? Are you getting them on the phone and are you asking for the sale? Those are the two main things to actually closing deals, right? Okay, so here now we know that for two tickets in, in your pocket, Mandy, how much have you made for this one sale for, for two tickets? How much have you made here? in your pocket instant commissions? Nope. How much have you put in your pocket? A hundred bucks. That's right. Exactly. A hundred dollars, right? A hundred dollars goes to you. The remaining goes here to events 365, right? So how do we charge this? That's the, the next biggest clue, okay? While you have them on the phone and you ask for the sale, is this MasterCard or Visa? right? What I like to do is I take my phone out, okay? I usually have my clients on my AirPod or my speaker so I can multitask. <laughs> uh, but you take your phone out, okay? And you take your notes and you 
put in the credit card information here. Why do I do it here and not on a pen, uh, pen and paper? Anybody know? Can anybody know? Does anybody know, I should say? You shouldn't have to register, Lauren. Security, that's right. Easier to delete. That's right. So as I'm as they're saying the information, okay, Mandy Covington, okay, that's the name on the card. Awesome card number, five, 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 three, 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 whatever, right? Expiration date, boom, boom, boom. And I'm writing it down, right? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, CVV, okay, done, boom. Billing address. Got it all right here. I don't have to ask again. I don't have to say, hey, I'm charging your card a million times. I don't have to say that. All the client cares about is that you don't overcharge them. Does that make sense to everybody? And, and I'll tell you exactly how the conversation goes. Okay, so now they know that it's $475.11 per ticket, right? So now we're gonna multiply this by two. We know that it's, um, oops, I typed that in the chat box, my bad. Um, so we're gonna multiply this by two. We know that it's $950.22. So once you have the credit card information, Okay, great. I have your card information. The total amount due today is $950.22. Am I okay to charge this card? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, boom. Now you have the card information. Okay. You're going to pay for the, the concert tickets here, which is the total $845.22. Okay. So here you're going to put in client's card client's name, okay, uh, their billing address, their uh, number, right? All of that stuff, okay? Delivery information, I would actually probably put your phone number. Um, please provide attendees email address. I would put your email address so that you could forward them the tickets, okay? So you can give it to them. And here's why I'm saying not to put their information because you still need a credit card authorization form. You give them those tickets, kiss the credit card authorization form goodbye. It's gone. I'm never going to give it to you. Oh, I'm busy. I'll do it later. Uh, it's not important to them, right? But you need that to protect yourself. So this is why you, you send it to yourself, okay? Then on your Square account, everybody should have their Square link. It should have their Square set up or, or business PayPal or whatever it is that you choose to use, okay? And have it set up to their business name. So like, for example, when I charge something on my square, it doesn't say Amy Cabrera. It says Luminous Travels on your bank statement. Okay. Um, I usually use my phone number because I don't want them to have the tickets in my email. And then I just forward everything to them. Okay. Is that okay? Even if we don't have an LLC? Uh, yes, you can go in as a sole proprietor. It doesn't take very long to get an EIN, you guys. You can do it um, through the IRS website, it's free. Make sure you click on the right link, but it is free. And you do have to do it during operating hours, meaning Monday through Friday from I think like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or something like that. Um, so, so you're gonna charge the extra $100 and in the notes of Square or wherever it is that you choose to charge it, you're typing in wholesale service fee wholesale service fee. So how many charges are going on one card? Can anybody answer that? Yep, two charges. Two charges, one card. How many times did we have to ask for the card information? Once, okay. All right, cool. So now we know how to charge. Anything that goes into your Square account, which by the way, you guys, it's an app on your phone that you can have. I mean, it's super, super simple to use. Uh, they may at one point ask you for your credit card authorization forms. Okay, so it's really important to keep those. But it's an app on your phone. I was actually looking for it. It's an app on your phone that looks like, let's see if you guys can see this one. Looks like that one, okay? So it's an app on your phone. And in here, you can instantly transfer it for a small fee. You can instantly transfer that money over to your bank account. Or you can use the card that they give you. Now you have cash in your hand right away, right? Okay. So Wayne, I, I, I kind of went over this at the beginning. I definitely, 
definitely don't want to repeat too much because I'm unfortunately I'm on limited time today. So this is recorded. Uh, I don't know where they're probably going to put the recording up on Rising Tide 3, but um, I don't want to keep back backtracking because I, I want to get through the information. Okay. Um, so, all right. So now we know that we have Square or PayPal business, whatever it is that you decide to use for your business. In Square, okay, and this I'm gonna use this as an example because I use this code quite often, right? So in Square, you can see that there is a checkout page, okay? So, oops. So see, I would type in a hundred dollars, and then see right here where it says add note. I'm gonna add the note, and here this is where I would put wholesale. service fee, okay? Wholesale service fee. Don't mind my broken phone, all right? So now on their bank statement, this is what shows up. $100 wholesale service fee. You could even go even further. Wholesale service fee, Harry Styles. Concert tickets. For 10 21, 21, right? So now there's no dispute where, what that charge is, right? They know exactly what it is. It's coming from this. They know that they purchased it, right? So now this note will show up on their bank statement. And then you click charge right here, straight from your phone, or you can do it from a computer. And you can either type in cash if they gave you cash, which obviously I, I usually don't do and nor do I recommend it, okay? Um, or the manual credit card entry. And this is where you start entering their information that you already have in your notes, okay? So now we know how to charge it. Does that all make sense? Does that all make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. All right. So we went over the tickets, Evo Rewards, uh, concerts. It's under play and then concerts, right? Under my deals. Play and then concerts and events 365, okay? We compared it over to Ticketmaster and while we were comparing, the ticket sold out. <laughs> so that was quite interesting. Uh, let's see if they're actually back. <laughs> oh, look, they're back. So 850 over at um, Ticketmaster. Now let's see what the real price is, okay? So Serenity, that's a great question. Um, I don't have the client ask me simply because I'm very upfront with it. So tip, so I'm going to actually go over exactly what the conversation is every single time with me and a client. Okay. But I want you guys to see something. This is the lowest ticket price on Ticketmaster. There are great seats. It's section 25, of course, but if they can't afford almost two grand, they are now looking for some. Now 975 or nine whatever that we had it for, right? The uh, 945 that we have it for doesn't seem so bad, right? Like, holy cow, that's half the price and what I can find it on Ticketmaster. So now we know um, what this is. And this is probably, you know, they add on their fees and all that stuff. Ticketmaster always has fees, always. It never fails. Um, so just, just know that, okay? Let's see. Yeah, this is the final. I always ask my clients, so if it, let's say they have the same section, same everything, right? I always ask my client to um, go to full checkout after they input their email, right? After they input their email. Because if we do the math here, let's see. Let's see what this ticket price actually came out to. So the ticket price is not really eight fifty; it's really nine hundred and eighty nine dollars per ticket after their fees. You see what I'm saying? So even Ticketmaster charges their own fees. So when you come in and you're like, "Oh, I have two tickets for nine hundred and forty five dollars," you're now winning. See what I'm saying? Because they can't find those tickets because it's not open to the public. Okay. Um. Yeah. The due to the new protocols, Jessica, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. So now we know what we are comparing it with. Now we know where to find it. Now, once I ask for the sale, what card are we placing this on? 
Okay, what card are we placing on? MasterCard or Visa? Boom, they give it to me. Okay, cool. Got the card, right? I wrote it down in my notes as they're telling me. Okay, great. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to go ahead and um, do I have permission? For, I always ask for permission. Do I have permission to charge the $945.22 as we discussed? That is for two tickets, section 103, row L for the Harry Styles in Uncasville, Connecticut on Thursday, October 21st at 8 p.m. You see how I go over all the information? I'm constantly repeating that information. And the reason why I repeat that is because I always want them to hear it over and over again to catch whatever mistake that there may be, okay? Um, yes, it's okay to charge. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and start charging that now. Just so you know, you may see two charges on your bank statement. One is for the wholesale tickets and the secondary is for the wholesale service fee. Did I say the secondary is for Amy Cabrera? Are you going to say the second one is for Brian Chance that goes in my bucket? <laughs> no, right? First one is for the wholesale tickets. The second is the wholesale service fee that the company charges. Do you see why it's so important to have your business stuff set up? Because it's not in your name. It's in your company's name. Whatever it is that you're, you named your company, right? So that's why it's so important there. Okay, so now we know how to charge it. Now we know how to combat the, why are you charging me twice? There, now there's no question, right? Because you were very upfront with that. You were very upfront with that. iPhone, I don't know your name. It says, is there a fee to use Square? What's your name? Um, so now we know that we're kind of laying everything out there on the table, right? We are still keeping that trust with you and client. And we are also avoiding or or reducing, I don't like avoiding, reducing the amount of questions that the client needs to ask. That's how you always wanna think of it. I'm constantly thinking, how can I reduce any additional questions? Because the more questions they have, the less trust that they have in you as an agent. Make sense? If they're like, okay, well, why are you doing this? But why are you doing that? Blah, 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 right? Now they don't have trust in you. Now they're probably not gonna book with you. If you are upfront, professional, creating a relationship, right? Explaining it from a business standpoint, now there's no question. There's no question. Now to answer your question, uh, iPhone, yes. Uh, Square does have a fee to use any sort of credit card, okay? Um, they do have a fee to use any sort of credit card. Uh, if you guys, um, I, I don't know if your mentor has given you their square link, but if they do, then it's a thousand dollars in free processing that you get. Okay. That's with any merchant. I don't, have you guys ever like been to a store and they're like, if you use a credit card, it's an extra 62 cents. That's the merchant fee. That's what that is. So we have, to, we absorb that as a, a business, right? But let me tell you, I'm making a hundred bucks on two tickets. I'm not worried about the 60 cents that they're charging me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to charge that back to the client. I feel like that's officially nickeling and diming. That's that's just not me. You do what you wish. It's your business. You're an independent contractor. I'm just saying that's not what I I, I worry about right there, right? Um, okay. So now we know how to charge it. Now we know how to ask for the sale. Now we know where we're making our money, right? Now, how do we put it all together? Here, once you have... Um, Okay, so 3%. So Jerry, 3% on $100 is three bucks, right? $3 that you're eating, but you're making 97. So that, that's how you kind of want to, or you can book a director of vendor, make 80% and, and uh, you know, the 20%, you, you basically forfeit. It's up to you, right? Um, okay, so where was I going with that? Um, okay, so we know how to ask for the sale. We know where to charge the sale. We know how to keep the credit card authorization, or excuse me, the credit card number. Now, it is very important that once you are done charging, that you delete that credit card author or credit card numbers and credit card information. You probably leave their billing address just so you don't have to ask for that again, but delete and get it out of your notes. Don't ever store that in your phone. You are responsible as the independent contractor, you are responsible for getting rid of that information, right? That we are licensed and bonded, but you don't, never wanna put that in jeopardy by not getting rid of it, okay? So you don't store it, absolutely not. 
and you let the client know if they're like, oh, you know, keep my credit card on file. Typically what I say now you have the opportunity to keep it in a locked safe. Sure. You can do that. Um, but I usually tell the client for security issues. I don't, I don't actually don't keep credit card on file. I'll just give you a call whenever it's due or whenever we have the next payment. Right. Um, I've done it once for a client and that's because they constantly traveled, but I, I knew that it was my responsibility to keep it locked up. You know what I mean? It's a lot. I feel like it's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you delete the card information. All right, so how do we pull it all together? How do we make this make sense for the client, right? This is where you wanna put, uh, you wanna create an invoice, which is basically like a receipt in a way. You've already closed the deal. You already have them on the phone. You already charge the card. They already have the wholesale service fee, right? Now you are creating a receipt what, and attaching the credit card authorization with the receipt. So they go together. Okay. So I have, this is the conversation. So I have everything booked for you. I got your two tickets. Aren't you so excited? Oh my gosh, you're going to go see Harry Styles and blah, 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 right? Have them all up. Yay. They're excited. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to send you over your receipt along with a credit card authorization form. In order for me to release your tickets, I do need that credit card authorization form back. You see how it's an exchange? I need that credit card authorization back first. And once I have that, I'll go ahead and release your, your, um, your tickets. That credit card authorization protects both you and I. We, you wanna use that verbiage, that credit card authorization protects both you and I from any, any sort of funkiness, right? It's gonna authorize me to charge what we discussed, which is the nine, $945.22, no more, no less. Once we have that signed, I'll go ahead and release your tickets to you. Done. See how it makes sense on a business level? See, the one thing that I want you guys to get rid of is that emotion out of it. You, that's what a lot of travel agents do, right? You put your emotion into it because we want this to work so bad and we want to make money so bad that we let our emotions take over. You got to take that element out of it, right? Pretend that you... Um, uh, pretend that you uh, work as an admin somewhere, right? Like somebody's paying you 15 bucks an hour, you work in an office, you have zero emotional attachment to it. And this is the pricing and this is what it is. And this is what, how you say it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's how you want to pretend that you are because you are a professional. You will be treated as a professional as long as you treat yourself as a professional. That's really what it comes down to, right? Once you start getting emotion and you start getting into, but what if this is not the best pricing? And what if this, what if that, what if that? And we like start driving ourselves crazy. It's it, it's a wrap. You're not confident anymore. You're no longer confident. Be confident in what you're saying, right? Okay. All right, so invoice, how does that look? Let's go ahead and just, um, I, I actually think Google even has an invoice but uh, like Google templates or whatever, but um, you guys can look for that. I just, I'm gonna pull a quick one up, okay? So this is, I just typed in free invoice. That's all I did. And in here, you can add your logo. Who's the inv invoice from? Is it from Amy Cabrera or Luminous Travels? Luminous Travels. Who is this being billed to? Client's name. Okay. Uh, Okay, ship to optional. We don't need to put that, right? What's the date? Today is um, 10, 6, 20, oops. Okay, so there's that. Payment terms, payment due in full. Due date is the six, right? because it was due, to, due today or day that, the, that they booked it, right? Now, here's where it gets important, okay? Remember, this is a receipt and each item, each area right here is considered a line item. So whenever you hear a senior travel agent talking about a line item, this is what we are referring to. Each line is a different product, right? So here you would type in wholesale tickets, Oops, Harry Styles, October 21, 
2021. The quantity is one, and, or excuse me, uh, the quantity is two, and the rate was Right, well, 422.61, okay. Four twenty two sixty one per ticket times two total amount is eight forty five twenty two. It's really important that this number matches whatever it is on my deals. Okay, so notice it's the same thing because this is what will show up on their bank statement. Okay, this is what will show up on their bank statement. All right, the net and oops. The next most important thing is that you put non refundable okay now if it's a hotel that has a cancellation um policy or anything like that then of course you can include that in here but for tickets they're usually non-refundable okay and then here All right, so now we put two and fifty dollars each. Okay, so now that equals out to a hundred dollars. The total um, is nine forty five twenty two. You could even put uh, taxes included. Okay, amount paid, this is because you already charged their card is 945.22, balance due is $0. Any notes that are relevant, any terms and conditions. So here, this is gonna be um, must complete So now on their bank statement, okay, um, it's better to do two, Erica, uh, simply because we're breaking it out by two right here, right? So I always do it per ticket or per item, whatever it is, um, unless you're doing it as a package, meaning like it's a hotel car and you don't want to really break everything out, then yes, that's where you would do it all as one. So it's really up to you on how you want to do it, um, but, but that's how... That's how I do it. Uh, okay, so now when they look at this, they're like, okay, eight forty-five. Okay, a hundred dollars. Now there's no question why they were charged twice, right? Does that make sense to everybody? This is their receipt showing the full charges. This is the amount that you discussed. It's all good, all gravy, baby, right? So uh, now, now they're confident in you. Is really what it comes down to. You send this, you save it as a PDF, right? So, um, down, don't ever send it, but you're going to download it as a, as a PDF and um, save it in your client's file, download or have your credit card authorization, create the email, attach this invoice and attach the credit card authorization form. And that's it. You're done. That's instant commissions. How long did that take us to research th those tickets? 30 minutes. Yeah, you made $100 in 30 minutes. That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all, right? That ain't bad at all. You spent 30 minutes researching or whatever um, and, and figure out, you know, how do we advertise this? How do we get mock bookings out for this? How do we, if it, it's not, maybe it's not concert tickets. Maybe you guys want to do theme park tickets, right? Um, 
like here, theme park tickets. I know for a fact, we make like 25 bucks on uh, Disney World tickets, right? Here's Disney World. Disneyland is like $5. It's not very much, but Disney World's a little bit higher. Um, so like, you know, uh, best Disney, best theme park ticket pricing, right? You don't want to use the word Disney too much because they get really sensitive about it. So, you know, best theme park ticket pricing. And you go in here and you're like, okay, I want to make sure, you know, see how much I'm making. It tells you what the Disney pricing is right here. This is a three-day theme park base ticket. If somebody comes at me with a one day, I don't even book it to be quite honest. I'm like, um, you know, the best pricing is on Disney. Why? I don't make any money, right? Sometimes I will. It depends if I'm getting the hotel and whatnot. Um, but usually I say, I'm not going to get any better pricing on a one day, which I don't, right? I usually say my, um, the best pricing that I can get is when it starts at three days or more. And that's when they're like, oh, okay. Right. Um, sorry. So this is a $40 difference. Now, after the taxes and everything, it comes out to be, I want to say about 25 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, something, something like that. Uh, so 410. And this is pretty accurate. That pricing that they cross out is pretty accurate. I've, I've checked it quite a bit of times, but you know, you can always check it yourself. Minus So $16.50. So here maybe you want to charge a wholesale service fee of $10, right? Save the client $6.50 per ticket. Um, times four tickets, that's 40 bucks that you're putting in your pocket the day, the day that you book it. You see what I'm saying? You can even create a whole package if you wanted to all wholesale. Um, travel. We get some really good deals on the um, car rentals, by the way. I was looking at that. Uh, but let's say somebody wants to come to Las Vegas, right? Who's coming to visit me? <laughs> Anybody coming to visit me? Uh, let's see. Let's go here. So Jeremiah, you're going to want to go from your phone uh, log into your back office from your phone to evil rewards and then you know click on the my deals thing and download the app from your phone from that back page and you shouldn't have to fill all of that out if I'm not mistaken all right so here notice that it sorts it for the hotels okay uh, notice how it sorts it for the hotels uh, excuse me for the most popular Jesus uh, I usually sort it by discount this is how I determine what I'm actually going to advertise or what I'm going to talk to people about or what I'm going to sell people on, right? Um, so like here, you can see this Alara by Hilton Grand Vacations, which by the way, is a really nice hotel. If anybody's ever looking for like a um, condo type hotel, uh, that's going to be your best, one of your best bets. Um, and you can see you save a hundred or excuse me, a thousand two hundred and twenty seven. That's a really big discount. Let's let's actually double check that real quick. Let's see what it's actually considering. Let me grab some water. See how it has like a full kitchen. So if you ever have anybody coming to Vegas that um, they want to like have a suite or a bigger space, but they don't want to spend a bunch of money on it. Alara is um, a good option as well as Hyatt Grand Vacation has a good option as well. So this is the Studio King. You save $1,107 per night. So I'm curious to see what that actually is on the public side. You see what dates I chose. 10, 21 through 25. That is not a lie. <laughs> $1,400 on Expedia. Interesting that hotels.com has it for 485. $1,500 on Priceline. This is per night. Travago's 362. So I'm curious how that's happening. That's a really big discount. If I were all of you, I would, I would be 
mock booking the heck out of this hotel right now for those dates. Um, so Studio King, right? If you wanted to see pictures or room details, I see the chat box going off, hold on. Yep. Okay, uh, so here, right? And now you can see, oh, hmm, something's fishy about that. Let me see. Maybe I chose the wrong one. So it looks like what's happening is that they're actually sold out. I think that's what's happening. Or the pricing actually changed. Oh no, here you go. Okay, so sweet one bedroom. So I'm looking for the suite one bedroom. Did I pass it? No. Bedroom, junior suite, one king bed, studio one king kitchenette. Grants, this this one. Oh, sold out. Hmm. That's what's happening. They're sold out. Okay. Suite two bedrooms, two bedrooms. Hmm. Looks like everywhere is selling out, huh? Uh, where was I here? So it looks like everywhere else is sold out of this suite one bedroom and you have it here where for a two bedroom, they're looking at $7,000. The lowest one is $6,800, right? For a sleep six, two bedrooms, but if they don't want that much, now you have the option to offer them for almost $5,000 less. This is a good mock booking. Okay, so that's how you can do it with hotels and, and all that good stuff. All right, these are close selling out. Yeah, October is actually, uh, Vegas is pretty busy months. This is when conventions are here, the weather's better, all that good stuff. How about take us to Lake Tahoe for eight bed? Okay, let's. Let's check it out, Blanca. Let's see, I'll do one more and then I gotta jump off, okay? Um, so travel, eight bedrooms. Mm, that's gonna be a private home though. That's a little, little different. I don't know that we'll get eight bedrooms from here, but we can check. That's gonna be more like classic vacations, it sounds like. And you're going over the holidays. I assume that's for you, Blanca. Absolutely. Sorry, I have to cut it so short and be so stern on the, on the not repeating stuff today. It's just we're, we're moving and packing. And if I were to show you my house right now, it might give everybody anxiety. <laughs> so don't want to do that. <laughs> um, okay, so. Yep. Yeah, no worries. So Hyatt Regency Lake Tahoe, it looks like uh, we saved $99 a night. So that's a good one. Um, Holiday Inn, 18 a night. So see how Lake Tahoe doesn't have that big of a discount, but I just go for the biggest one, right? Hyatt Regency, uh, and then you mark it up here. So you have to make sure you add in your wholesale service fee when you're giving a pricing. Um, so for this one, you know that price line is running at 529. So I'd probably drop the price down to, I don't know, $499, right? $499 would still save the client 30 bucks a night, putting in your pocket, um, putting in your pocket 70 bucks per night, you know? So, so yeah, that's how I would do that. Now for the eight bedroom, uh, Blanca, I would definitely look at, um, I would look at a uh, classic vacations. That's going to be probably your best bet. Oh, South Lake Tahoe. Yeah, you probably go there too. Y'all just want to go to Lake Tahoe. <laughs> I, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. All right. Um, I'm not, it's probably going to be put up on Rising Tide 3 um, or your team website. Just look for it there. So, 
I think that's it for me today, guys. Um, any additional questions that I can answer quickly? Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you guys. All right, awesome, I'm glad it was clear. Who was the resort company of, of which, of what? Explain what Square is. I did explain what Square is. That's where we charge our wholesale service fee. That is a, um, it's an app that you can have on your phone and you register as a business with an EIN instead of, oh, profit agility. Yeah. Profit agility. <sighs> These are re resort weeks and condos. Okay, so um, basically you would follow the same formula on how you would charge it if you wanna charge an uh, instant commission or not. Um, obviously the best deals are going to be within 60 days of travel, right? And I mean, that's what I like to look at personally. You can go up to a year out, I want to say, and here you can filter it down. So these are going to be, like I said, timeshares, right? Now, the only thing with profit agility is it's date specific. They have to check in on the date that it specifies, right? They can leave whenever they want, but they have to check in on the date that it specifies. So like for this one, uh, normally this one bedroom in Torres Mazatlan sleeps for normally for the week, it's $1,300 and 49 cents. Our week, including taxes and everything is $367 and 16 cents. So, and you can see here, it, it includes taxes, right? So now either you can one, um, like, let's say we wanted to choose I don't know, something that's a little further out, right? Maybe you wanted to do this one, okay? The total price that we have to pay for it is the um, 494.81. The maximum suggested price is $1,349.00, right? So you could turn around and say that this resort week for the entire week is $800. Right, so eight hundred dollars minus four ninety four. You are now putting three hundred dollars in your pocket. You can either one include the commission in the pricing the way we do all the time. Right. Um, I went too far. Hold on. Okay, so you can say that it's that you can include the commission in the pricing, so it's all included here. Right. The only thing is, if you notice when I increased it, profit agility takes a portion of whatever it is that you're increasing. So they're always gonna get their little cuts. That's what vendors do, right? Or you could turn around and say, wholesale pricing, charge a wholesale service fee of 300 and put that in your pocket on Square. And you would do the same invoice like I had it earlier. So that's the resort weeks. Oh, you guys are very welcome. Um, Melissa, I don't really use Expedia anymore. I only use it for um, price matching. You can price match with Funjet. Uh, Destiny, I cannot go into mock booking. That There's actually a lot of trainings on mock bookings. If you look at, um, there's so many. Oh my gosh, I, I know that Jen has done some. I know... A lot of trainers have done some and they're recorded. So they're in the training website. Unfortunately, I just don't have um, a lot of time right now to go fully into that. But, um, you know, maybe somebody else can can definitely do a live training soon. But they're definitely in there because I know that you're you're newer. So I know you I know it's a lot of videos. Trust me when I know that when I say I know that. Um, but just know that they are there and you can watch them at any time. OK. All right, guys, I think that is it for me today. I hope you guys have a great day. Happy, what is today, Wednesday? No, yes, happy Wednesday. <laughs> I will, um, I'll see you guys soon. I am doing another training, just so you guys know, on time management coming up this month. That'll be October, October 19th at 10 a.m. If y'all wanna mark your calendars. So anybody who is struggling with balancing life, with balancing 
uh, business and life, balancing babies and life and all that stuff. Uh, that's what we will be doing a training on is time management. Cause I personally have five kids myself, two of which are toddlers. So, um, you know, we'll definitely, I definitely, uh, had to manage my time pretty well. So I'll be doing that. It is on October 19th at 10 AM. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye everybody.